looking at stats alone, uh, July was a really good reading month for me. However, I am feeling like I am deep, deep in a summer slump. Let's uh, wrap up my July and then we can talk a little bit more about my, my slump, my slump feelings. All right, so I read seven books in July and one, two, three, four, five of them were five star reads. So yeah, like I said, looking at the stats, it was a great month for me, but how, <laughs> anyway, <sighs> books. Okay, so the first book that I read in the month of July was Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey, Mc... Casey McQuiston. And this was a reread for me, a reread within the same year because <laughs> I listened to this book on audiobook, loved it so much that I went out and bought a physical copy of it, which by the way, why did this first come out in paperback? I have hardly ever seen a new release come out in paperback before hardcover. I want a hardcover. I want multiple editions of this book. But anyway, so I started off this month by rereading Red, White, and Royal Blue, and it's amazing. If you have not heard me talk about this yet, which I think I've talked about it in like three previous videos, maybe. <laughs> um, it is set in a alternate reality, very similar to our own, except a woman won the 2016 presidential election and this follows her son so it follows the first son of the first female president of the united states and he gets into a little bit of a jam with the uh, prince of wales and they have to like fake a friendship because they don't want to like cause like an international dispute or whatever and then their fake friendship turns into a real friendship and then it turns into a romance and it's the best thing ever so i reread this i loved it five stars i kind of feel like rereading it again <laughs> but i won't i'll hold off until at least next year uh but it just it <sighs> It, mm. So it's a great rom-com, but it's also like a soothing balm from my soul. It's a great book. I have other videos talking about it. You can go watch them if you want more about that. Okay, so the next book that I read was, I listened to it on audiobook, and it was Bad Blood by John Carreyrou. This book, five stars, Fascinating. So this is a nonfiction account written by the reporter that first like broke the story on the uh, Theranos scandal, fraud and scandal, and it was fascinating. Um, other people have said that this book reads like a thriller, and it really does. But it's true. It's all true. So I didn't know that this was going on while it was going on. So Theranos was this company that was started by this college dropout. Like she dropped out of college and she was like, I developed this this tool that can, um, or this medical device that can run all of these medical tests by using only like a few drops of blood, uh, you know, cause medical tests usually require um, multiple samples. You can't keep testing the same sample of blood because it gets used up. You know, I'm not a biologist. I don't freaking know. But <laughs> she like conned so many people into thinking that this, this medical device worked and it just like, there was all these problems and she had all these people investing in it. And so many people believed her and she actually started like testing people's blood in Walgreens, but it was, it didn't work. It didn't work. It, it wasn't real. And it, oh man. And it's just like fascinating. Fascinating. Um, like the ups and downs of this story. And it's all real. So I really suggest reading this book. Fascinating stuff. Um, another thing about it is that um, the reporter, John Carreyrou, made everything really accessible to someone who isn't a biologist and barely understands, you know, like medical things. He made everything really accessible. So he like explained things. He gave context for the like medical and biological processes that I wouldn't know that it, like a general reader wouldn't know, but he didn't like go too in depth where then you, then you were lost. It was very accessible, 
fascinating, thrilling stuff. I really suggest this book. Then I read The Vanishing Stair by Maureen Johnson, and this is the second book in what I guess is a mystery trilogy. Um, the first one was um, Truly Devious, and I gave this three out of five stars. I was kind of disappointed. So the I've never read a mystery book that was separated into like a trilogy like the same mystery separated into three different books and I don't like it I love mystery series but I like when each book is like a mystery that's contained in that book and like maybe sometimes they have like an overarching through line but the actual mystery the the a plot is solved by the end of that particular book and I am really not liking the whole like cliffhanger thing. And I think this book, The Vanishing Stare, has like second book syndrome, like crazy. <sighs> there were like two big revelations in this book. So um, Truly Devious is about a girl who's fascinated by true crime. She um, goes to this very prestigious like private school up in the up in the mountains of Vermont. Um, and this school was the setting of like a kidnapping and a murder, like way back in the twenties. And she starts to uncover, she starts to like try to solve this cold case. First book <sighs> leaves off on a cliffhanger. And then the second book pretty much picks up right where we left off, but like not a lot happens. We have two like major revelations, but she doesn't do a lot of sleuthing. We just sort of like stumble upon these revelations and there's some new characters in it, but like they don't, I don't really, I didn't really care about them. And it was just like, I just want to know, I want to know like all the, I, I, I want to know like the end. I want to know the end. And this book was just like teasing me way too much. Three stars. But I'm still, I'm still going to, um, I'm still going to pick up the next one when it comes out because I have to know. I have to know the answers. <sighs> and it was just paced too slowly. It was just paced too slow. So anyway, bummer. Then I read Giant Days Volume 10 and I just noticed that like the, the little protective coating is coming off and that really, that really bums me out. <laughs> um, Giant Days Volume 10 by John Allison and other people. John Allison writes it and then there's different um, illustrators and colorers and anchors and things like that. Uh, five stars. I love this series. It's my favorite series. It's about uh, three women who are going to university in the UK and it's just about like their shenanigans. It's slice of life, university times. It's great. And what I like about this series in particular is that it really does progress the timeline. Because, you know, you have some shows that are set, like, in school and they're just, like, perpetually in school or, like, perpetually a baby or, you know, like, Rugrats or whatever. They were, like, babies for however many years. Um, but <laughs> this really, like, progresses the timeline. So it gives it, like, a sense of importance or urgency or whatever because you're like, oh, they're going to graduate and they're not going to be, like, all together anymore. Um, so yeah, it's great. One thing, um, the art changed for a couple of issues in here and I didn't like it as much. Um, but the, the artist has changed a couple of times over the course of the series. There was just one artist where she drew everyone's chin really pointy and their nose is weird and it kind of like threw me off a little bit. But anyway, Great series. Can't wait for the next one. I love it. I really suggest Giant Days if you want to get into uh, comic books. Then I read another comic book um, for The Reading Rush. So The Reading Rush was something that really kept me reading towards the end of this month where I just felt like super slumpy. So I read uh, The Runaways Volume 2, Best Friends Forever, and I just love this series. Um, it's written by Rainbow Rowell, which is one of my favorite authors, and illustrated by Chris Anka with... Matthew Wilson. Um, and you can just tell that they're just having so much fun with these characters. And there's a lot of drama, you know, because it's like, you know, they're teenagers, young adults, whatever. Um, and that comes with a lot of drama. But, uh, <laughs> so lots of drama, but you can tell that the people working on this book are just having a blast with it. So it's a Marvel, what did I rate this? Four out of five stars. So it's a Marvel series, if you don't know, 
But uh, more people are familiar with it now because they did make a TV show out of the original run. So the original run was like early 2000s, I think. I have the first, I have the very first one that I read. Um, So there was like an original run. So it's this group of teenagers who find out that their parents are evil supervillains. Oh no. And then they run away because like, you know... (laughs) It's hard enough getting along with your parent as a teenager, let alone when they're super villains. So they run away and things happen. This is a continuation of that original series and love it, but I am feeling, since I only read the first bind up of the original series, I am feeling like I'm missing a lot of backstory. And they do do really well trying to keep this sort of contained where you don't have to read the original series, but I am feeling like I'm missing quite a bit of backstory. I will try to go back and read the original Runaways. Maybe I can get it from my library. I'm not sure how many issues there are, but having a lot of fun with this and it uh, completed several challenge of the reading rush. several challenges of the reading rush. So it worked out really well. Then I listened to the poet at the Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo, an audiobook. Five out of five stars, absolutely worth the hype. So this is a book that is written in verse, which was a little intimidating at first because I'm like, (sighs) I like poetry and I like things that are in verse, you know, but I um, haven't read much since my college days. And I feel like it's better to read that sort of things when you can dissect and you can dissect them within a class or group setting. So I'm like, I don't want to read this alone. <laughs> but I did. Five stars. It's great. So written in verse about um, this young girl living in New York. And I believe her family is Dominican. And it's just about her like growing up, figuring out her place in the world, figuring out her place with her family's religion. They're Catholic. Yeah, they're Catholic. She goes to church a lot, but I don't, is she, does she ever, they, don't, they talk about confession. Catholics are the only ones that confess. <laughs> um, so yeah, <sighs> figuring out who she is with her religion, um, starting like a relationship for the first time and really excellent. The only thing that was hard for me is that I've been having trouble being in that like teenage headspace when I'm reading. Cause it's like, their problems are very different from my problems right now. And I just want to be like, you guys, in a few years, none of this will matter. So relax, (laughs) chill out. Uh, But you know, whatever, Uh, which is, you know, and it's different from like, you know, these teenagers figuring out because they have superpowers. It's not like a real, it's not like a real thing. But like when I feel like real drama, I'm just like, (sighs) I don't want to be back in that teenage space right now. Uh, But anyway, if you don't mind that, go read it. Actually, listen to it because Elizabeth Acevedo reads the the audiobook and she's most excellent. Then finally, more poetry. I read Don't Call Us Dead by Denez Smith. And this is a poetry collection. And I gave this five out of five stars because it is freaking excellent. So this is a poetry collection that is all about being black, queer, and living with AIDS in modern America. And it, it's just so, it's so good. It's so good. I I can't even begin to unpack this. There is a lot to unpack here, um, but it is excellent. I'll say my, um, My favorite poem in here was definitely uh, Dinosaurs in the Hood, which is really good. Yeah, Dinosaurs in the Hood on page 26. Really, 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 really good. Um, So even though it tackles those extremely heavy topics, it is still very accessible as far as poetry goes, because I think a lot of people have this notion that poetry is inaccessible. Even me sometimes, because I'm like, I want to read this in a group setting where we can talk about it and I don't have to like dissect it all myself. Um, I'm going to leave, um, like another, another more reviews of this book down in, uh, my comment section. No, the description, the thing down below, the doobly-doo. You don't have to take my word for it. You can go and watch and listen to other people's opinions on this poetry collection. Really excellent. Very short. I read it for the reading rush. Um, completed the challenge of read a book all in one sitting or read a book in the same place. And it's just, it's just really, 
really good. It makes me want to pick up more poetry. Poetry. It makes me want to pick up more by this particular author. Uh, yeah. Five out of five stars. Excellent. Go pick this up. So there you have it. All the books that I read in July, some really excellent ones. However, I'm feeling like so stumpy right now. Um, and I need, I need something to like really kickstart my reading again. If you have any suggestions of just like grab you page turners, please let me know down in the comments. Otherwise, I think I might pick up something to reread uh, because just like all of the new books that I try to get into, they're just not grabbing me at the moment. And it might just be because this summer for me has been like the busiest summer <laughs> ever. And I'm so tired <laughs> that I just want to, I don't want to think about anything um, at all. So <laughs> give me a page turner that I don't have to think about. Uh, thank you. So yeah, seven books, several five star reads. Uh, let me know what you're reading. Let me know what you do to get yourself out of a slump. I would love to know. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much for watching this video. And until my next one, happy reading nerds.